the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> it's King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the North Country, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On you, Husky! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the greedy race for riches. Now back to the days of the gold rush when Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, King, battled through storm and snow to preserve law and order as they met the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Young Jimmy Nelson trudged along beside his father toward their mine about five miles outside of Dawson. It was late summer, and already the chill in the air predicted the long, cold winter that was to come. Jimmy tried hard to match the long strides of his father, but he was small for 13, and his dad was a fast walker. You're not going to come all the way to the mine with me, Jimmy. Jake and I are doing some blasting today, and it'll be too dangerous. I'll just walk partway with you, Dad. When are you going to let me work in the mine with you? Not till you're at least 14. You're not big enough yet. By then, I'll bet you'll be really taking a lot of gold out of it, won't you? I hope so, son. It's beginning to look pretty hopeful, all right, huh? And maybe I'll have good news for you and your mother when I come home tonight. I heard you tell Mom you thought maybe you'd hit a gold pocket. Uh, we're not sure yet. Anyway, we don't know how big it would be if we did hit it. And uh, half of it would be Jake's, you know. How did you and Jake get to be partners? He was one of the first people I met up here. Jake knows a lot more about mining than I do, and I had some money for equipment. So we teamed up and started a partnership. I bet if Jake wasn't your partner, you'd let me work with you right now. Oh, son, what makes you think that? He just doesn't like having me around. I can tell. Oh, you just imagine that, son. Jake likes you. Dad, if you do strike a rich vein of gold and, and we get some money, may I have a dog? <laughs> so you're on that subject again. Of course, Jimmy. I've told you a hundred times. When we start taking in some real money, I'll buy you the finest dog I can find. I don't see why we have to wait. Old Ezra ba Bailey has some dogs, and, and they're cheap. Oh, Ezra takes in all the strays he can find. They're mostly old dogs or mongrels. They aren't good. But Ezra feeds them and gets them good and strong again. He always can sell them. No, not to me he can't. I want to get the best when I buy a dog for you. And good dogs are mighty expensive. Gee, Dad, I wouldn't care what kind he was. Now, Jimmy, we've gone through all this before. You just be patient and you'll have one of the finest dogs in the Yukon one of these days. You think you'll be as good as Sergeant Preston's lead dog, King? <laughs> well, I, I won't promise anything like that. There aren't many dogs like him. But we'll come as close as possible. Gee, I wish you'd hurry up and strike it rich. And you'd better hurry up and get back to your mother. I think she wants you to do some errands for her. This is as far as you're going. I have to hurry. I told Jake I'd be at the mine early. Now, run along now. Right. I'll see you tonight, Dad. Morning, Jake. Uh, hello, Dave. You must have got here awfully early. Yeah, I was pretty anxious to get things started. I got the dynamite all set. Now, this blast ought to uncover the vein we're looking for. It will, all right. That vein's getting richer and richer. There's a gold pocket here. I uh, had a hard time keeping from telling my family. You didn't tell them, did you? Oh, I, I hinted at it, that's all. They don't know that we're practically sure of it. I didn't want them to be disappointed. You said we can't be sure till we really see it. That's right. It might turn out to be a false alarm. Now, let's get going. What do you want me to do? Uh, you can go back there in the shaft and bring that lantern out. All right. That's where I set the blast. I'll get this pick and these shovels out of the way. <laughs> I forgot it. Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police was about to enter the trading post in Dawson when he saw Jake Tracy running toward him. Sergeant! Sergeant Preston! Hello, Jake. What's wrong? Well, we, we just had a bad accident. Dave Nelson is dead. Dave Nelson? It was at the mine. We were blasting. Dave was lighting the fuse. I was waiting just outside the mine. I don't know what could have happened. All of a sudden, there was an explosion. Dave was trapped. Did you get him out? Yeah. It took a long time. It was too late. He was buried in rock. I thought I'd better get to you right away. 
I haven't told Mrs. Nelson. I'll get my dog team and we'll bring Dave's body back. This will be a bad blow for his family. I just couldn't tell his wife myself. I'll tell her later, Jake. It was three weeks later. Young Jimmy Nelson finished piling logs into the wood box beside the stove and looked anxiously at his mother, who sat sewing before the window. There. Now we'll have enough firewood to last for two days. Thank you, son. I hope you aren't too worried about things, Mom. Pierre is going to let me help him at the trading post afternoon. I bet if I do a good job, I'll be making lots of money pretty soon. No, don't worry, son. We'll get along all right. Oh, I hate to think of you sewing clothes for other people. I like to sew, Jimmy. Perhaps Jake will bring more money to us from the mine this week, too. I don't see why he won't let me work with him there, and I'm good and strong. No, and... Jimmy. Even if Jake said you could, I don't think I'd want you to do it. Too dangerous. After what happened to your father, it... Oh, it'd worry me to death. Dad promised me I could when I got to be 14, and that'll be soon. My birthday is just two weeks after yours, and that's just a month away. We'll see then, son. I, uh, I saw Ezra Bailey yesterday. I always like to help him with his dogs. He's the man who picks up stray dogs, isn't he? Yeah. Ezra knows lots about dogs. If anyone has one to get rid of, he just calls Ezra. And lots of times Ezra cures more what's wrong with him and gets paid for doing it. He sounds like a kind man. He is. He told me if I wanted a job, he'd pay me for cleaning out the kennels a couple times a week. Mercy, Jimmy. Have you asked everybody in town for a job? Don't you worry, Mom. Even if the mine doesn't pay off, I'm going to take care of you so you won't have to work. Oh, you're a fine son, Jimmy, but I don't want you to work. You're too young. you got to have some fun. Oh, I'll answer it. Oh, okay. Come on in. Hello, Jimmy. Hello, Mrs. Nelson. How are you, Jake? Sit down and take your coat off. Thanks. I came over to bring you your share of what I took out of the mine this week. I got the cash for it at the bank. That's very kind of you. How's the mine doing, Jake? Did you strike that gold vein yet? No, Jimmy, I guess your father and I were too optimistic. False alarm, I'm afraid. I wasn't even able to take as much gold out this week as last. That was little enough. I wanted to talk to you about something, Mrs. Nelson. Yes? I wonder if it wouldn't be better for you to sell me your interest in the mine. I could probably scrape enough together to pay fair back to the States for you and Jimmy. That's... Very thoughtful of you, Jake. But see, if the mind isn't any good, why do you want to buy it? Jimmy, Jake's just trying to be kind to us, that's all. Well, I can get something out of it. This country isn't very pleasant for a woman without a husband to take care of her. I'm going to take care of her. And as soon as I'm 14, I'm Jimmy, going to... Jimmy, I think you'd better run down to the store and get that flour I need. It'll soon be time for supper. Please don't sell the mine, Mom. Dad was sure it was a good one. Maybe that strike will strike that gold pocket he told us about. Oh, I won't do anything right away, son. It's going to be kind of lonesome for your mother this winter, Jimmy. Winter's closing in fast. It'll be around zero in a couple of weeks. That'll mean a lot of wood chopping for you. I'm not afraid of work. I got two jobs already. One with Pierre and one with Ezra Bailey. Run along, Jimmy, and don't worry about it. Early winter had settled on the Yukon. Sergeant Preston stopped his dog team beside the cabin of old Ezra Bailey. A long runway was built beside it, and the old man had just finished feeding three dogs inside the enclosure. Hello there, Ezra. Hello, Sergeant. How are you? You stay here with the team, King. These all the dogs you have? Yeah, just three of them. I sold the rest after they were strong enough. Them two huskies will be ready for someone in a week or so. This one beside the fence here doesn't look as if he'll ever be ready. Uh, poor old fella, he's been used mighty hard in his day. Sam Jenkins found him in the woods. He was too weak to walk almost. He sure is thin. He's been a sled dog. Hair's all worn off his shoulders. Yes, and his feet are in bad shape too. Oh. Sam said he was going to put him out of his misery, but the dog's got such kind eyes that when he looked at Sam, well, Sam said he just couldn't pull the trigger. And you couldn't do it either, huh? Sam brought him here. Young Jimmy Nelson was helping me clean the kennels. Jimmy kind of took to the old dog, and I couldn't dress up and shoot him right in front of the kid. You wouldn't have done it anyway, Ezra. I know you. How's Jimmy getting along? Oh, I guess him and his ma are having quite a hard time since Dave was killed. Oh. Jimmy says Jake is 
working the mine all alone and giving Mrs. Nelson half of what he gets out of it. But I guess the mine ain't a very good one. Oh, well, Ezra. But uh, there's Jimmy now. Wonder what he's doing here today. He's supposed to come day after tomorrow. Hello, Jimmy. Hello, Sergeant Preston. How are you, Jimmy? Fine, thanks. I was just petting King up there with your team. You're a nice dog. He sure is, Jim. What brings you here today? I suppose you come to see this old dog you've been taking care of. What do you think of him, Sergeant Preston? Well, he wouldn't win any prizes in a dog show. He's perked up some since he's had a few square meals. I guess I'll have to keep him till he dies of old age, because nobody will want to buy him. That's why I came to see you today, Ezra. Will you sell him to me? Sell him to you? Jimmy, I'd give him to you. But your mother don't want a dog. She told me so. He's going to take a lot of feeding, Jim. But I know Mom would like him after we had him for a while. Ezra, I saved up a dollar. Would, would you... <laughs> but Jimmy, your mother may be worried about feeding him. Dogs is kind of expensive to feed, you know. I've got a part-time job at the trading post now. And I know Pierre would give me some scraps to feed him. And he'd be fine company for Mom when I'm away. Keep her from getting lonesome. It'll be quite a while before he's able to play with you, Jim. He's going to need lots of care. Yes, and his feet are in bad shape, and he's thin. I'll nurse him. You've taught me how to take care of dogs, Ezra. Oh, Jimmy, if I give you this dog, your mom'll take my head off. I've got that all figured out, Ezra. It's Mom's birthday tomorrow, and if I tied a ribbon on him and pinned a card on it saying, Happy birthday to the best mom in the world, <laughs> she'd like him. <laughs> and she'll own part of him then herself. Well, that's one way of doing it. Uh, why don't you let him have the dog, Ezra? Well, I... Uh... I'll stop at the store and contribute a case of dried fish to your mother's birthday party, Jim. That'll keep the dog fed for quite a while. Gee, that would feed him for a long time. Oh, but Sergeant, I can't let... Yes, you can, Jim. You see... One reason I'm doing it is because you remind me of the big thrill I got when I got my first dog. I wanted him just about as much as you do this one. Well, I guess if the sergeant thinks it's all right, you can take him. Oh, gee, thanks, Ezra. Here's my dollar. Oh, I don't want any pay for it. Please, I want to buy him. Come on out, old boy. What are you going to call him, Jim? I guess I'd better wait until I give him to Mom. She ought to have something to say about it. <laughs> Well, old boy, you're really my dog now. He certainly likes you, Jimmy. God, I think he's wonderful. Uh, here's a piece of rope to lead him home with. And uh, I kind of want to be part of this birthday party, too. Now, you take this dollar that you give me, Jimmy, and buy the dog a collar with it for your ma's birthday. Jeez, thanks, Ezra. That'll make him look a little more dressed up. Come on, old boy, we're going home. <laughs> Goodbye, and thanks, both of you. Goodbye, Jim. I'll bring that fish over later. Oh, thanks, Sergeant. <laughs> and remember, you tell him all this was your idea. Look at him. That kid's as proud of that old skinny dog as if it was the finest Malamute in the country. And that dog will respond to it. He'll be a different animal in a few weeks. Well, his mother will probably be mad as can be when she sees her birthday present. <laughs> oh, they're having an awful hard time of it since Jimmy's father died. I hear they can hardly scrape up enough to eat. You know, uh... Funny about that claim of Nelson's. I thought it was a good one. Well, Jake said it was all a false alarm. Guess the gold vein is just about run out. Jake says there ain't enough in it, even for himself. That accident was a tragic thing. Did you ever find out how it happened, Sergeant? Well, there wasn't much to find out, Ezra. By the time I got there, Jake had pulled Dave's body out from under a pile of rocks. Dave just didn't know how to use dynamite, I guess. Ah, maybe I shouldn't have given Jimmy that dog. Don't worry, Ezra. There's plenty of dog food at the barracks. I'm sure we can spare some for Jim's dog. I'll drop in with some dog food, oh, about every week. They won't have to worry about feeding him. Well, now, that's mighty nice of you, Sergeant. <laughs> I sure'd like to be a little mouse in the corner when Jimmy gives his mother her birthday present. <laughs> Sergeant Preston has given you a lot of dried fish for your birthday. Sergeant Preston? 
dried fish. And see, Ezra gave you a dog collar. <laughs> well, I've certainly never had a birthday like this before. You, you like him, don't you, Mom? Oh, yes, of course, Jimmy. Oh, it's so sweet of you to get him for me. But I think he should be half yours, too. Oh, well, my birthday's coming in two weeks, and you could give him half back to me for my present. <laughs> oh, that sounds just a little complicated, but I guess we could arrange it. Oh, gee, you're <laughs> nice. I thought maybe we could call him Happy on account of, well, you know, Happy Birthday. Well, the name doesn't exactly fit him, but, well, come here, Happy. Come here. Nice, oh boy, good. See, he likes that name, and he likes you already. Well, maybe we can make him fit the name. <laughs> oh, thank you very much, son. And don't you worry about taking care of him. I'm going out to the mine that day when I'm 14 and ask Jake to let me help him. We'll get twice as much gold out of the mine then. No, dear. I'm afraid the mine isn't any good. Jake says the vein's running out completely, and anyway, he doesn't want you to go out there. He says it's too dangerous for you. Fred Davis helped his dad. Fred is getting to know a lot about mining. He showed me how to tell when a vein was good by the looks of the rock. We'll and he... see about it later, dear. Oh, 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 dog oh, oh, oh. I'll bet it's Sergeant oh, oh. Preston with your birthday present. Oh, 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 oh. oh, it's the sergeant, all right. Hello, Sergeant Preston. Hello, Jimmy. Guess I'll put this box of fish down here. Well, I'll take it into the woods, Jack. Come on, Happy. Oh, oh, oh. Good evening, Sergeant Preston. Come on in. I hear you brought me a birthday. <laughs> well, it's the first time I ever gave a lady a case of dried fish for her birthday. But anyway, happy birthday. Oh, thank you. And I'm sure happy thanks you. Happy? <laughs> That's what Jimmy decided to call that poor old broken down dog. Oh? Sit down, Sergeant, and have some supper with us. Why, I've had supper, thanks, so I better be going and not delay yours. Well, just stay for a minute, then. I can wait. I want to ask you advice about something. Oh, of course. Sit down, won't you? Thanks. It's about selling our share in the mine. Jake's offered to buy it and give me enough money to go back to the state. Well, that might be a good idea, Mrs. Nelson. Well, I'm sure it's more or less of a nice gesture on Jake's part. The mine isn't paying anything. Well, of course, that's up to Jake. The funny part of it is, though, that I don't want to leave here. Dave and I worked so hard to make a home out of this cabin. And I've made good friends in town, and... Well, if Jimmy and I could make a living here, I'd like to stay. You don't have to decide right away, do you? Sergeant, do you think it'd be too hard on Jimmy to work in the mine after he's 14? Why, no, I don't think so. Plenty of boys are helping their father. Dave had such confidence in that claim. He was sure they'd strike a rich vein in it soon. Well, why don't you try it, Mrs. Nelson? I'm going off on quite a long patrol tomorrow, but I'll be back in about two weeks. We'll uh, talk it over then and see how things work out. My birthday, Jake. I'm 14. Well, it's a funny way to celebrate it, walking five miles from town in zero weather. Well, Dad promised me I could start working in the mine when I was 14. Now that I'm practically a man, I thought maybe you'd let me help you. Sorry, kid, I can't use you. You'd just be in the way. This mine ain't worth the time you spend in it anyway. But, gee, I... Oh, what's this? Why, Jake, this piece of rock, it's got streaks of yellow in it. Jake, it's gold. No, no, that ain't valuable. It's only... But it is. Fred Davis has been teaching me about it. I'm going to take this to town. Now, listen, Jimmy. I'm handling this mine. I know what's valuable and what ain't. Oh. Well, if this isn't valuable, you won't care if I keep it. It's pretty anyway. You going straight back to town from here? Yeah. Why? Well, you see, I didn't know you were interested in mining, really. I want to show you something I found the other day may turn out to be a better claim than this one. Maybe the two of us could be partners. Just like your dad and me. Oh, King! One, King! I guess you and Jimmy's dog will get along together. Oh, 
Sergeant Preston. Good evening, Mrs. Nelson. There's nothing wrong with Jimmy, is there? Jimmy? Why, not that I know of. I just brought this box of dog food from the barracks for Happy. Oh. Oh, won't you come in? All right, old fella. Here's some food for you. Why'd you ask about Jimmy, Mrs. Nelson? Well, Jimmy went out to the mine today, and he hasn't come back yet. He never stays out like this. He didn't get back to supper, and... Well, I'm worried. Well, maybe he went back to Jake's cabin with him. He and Jake had never been very friendly. It's not like Jimmy to do this. He knows how to worry me. Well, why didn't he take his dog with him? Well, it's five miles out to the mine, and Happy's feet are still a little sore. Oh. I wish he had taken him, though. Happy's been trying to get out after him all afternoon. They've been together constantly. That dog just worships Jimmy. Do you think Jimmy'd go into town for anything? He's never done anything like this before. I don't know. I'd have seen him if he'd come to town, probably. Well, perhaps I'd better go out and look for him. Oh, I hate to bother you. no Sergeant, trouble. But... Funny he'd stay out after dark. We could find out from Jake if Jimmy got to the mine. Well, where is Jake's cabin? It's on the way out to the mine. I don't know quite how to direct you, but... Would you mind if I went along? No, not at all. You can ride on my sled. Uh, oh, might be a good idea to take Happy with us. Happy? Why? Well, just in case Jimmy isn't at Jake's cabin, Happy might be able to help us find him. Sergeant, you think something has happened to him, don't you? Well, I doubt he'd get lost. It's bright moonlight. Let's not worry until we know we have something to worry about. <laughs> You stay there, Mrs. Nelson. I'll find out if Jimmy's here. Hello, Jake. Who is it? Oh, Sergeant Preston. Jimmy Nelson here with you? Why, no. No, Jimmy isn't here. Did you see him this afternoon? Well, he came out to the mine today, but he didn't stay very long. Didn't he get home? No. Something must have happened to him. He's probably in town somewhere. I think we'll go out to the mine and look around. Maybe that's a good idea. I think I'd better go along and help us for him. Wait, I'll get my park. I don't see why we're coming way out here to the mine. It snowed all afternoon. Won't be any tracks. He's probably in town with Fred Davis. Here we are. Hunting! Here we are, Hunting! of him here. I wonder what could have happened. Maybe we'll find out soon. I think you can let Happy off the sled now, Mrs. Nelson. I've had a terrible time holding him on here. All right, Happy. Where go? What's the idea of riding that dog on your sled, Sergeant? His feet are sore. Come on, Happy. Now, uh, this is going to be hard on you, fella. But find Jimmy. Find Jimmy, boy. <laughs> I didn't know Jimmy had a dog. He hasn't had him very long. But long enough, I think. Find Jimmy, Happy. <laughs> Going back along the trail we came on. He's probably headed for home where it's warm. Well, wherever he's going, we're following him. On Jake! On your husky! That dog is plumb foolish, Sergeant. Jimmy wouldn't leave the trail and go off into the hills like this. Neither would Happy if Jimmy hadn't. Oh, 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 oh. Happy, stop. Do you think he's coming? What is it, Happy? Where is he, boy? <laughs> Why, there's a deep hole here. It's an old mine shaft. Help. What? Help. Sounds like Jimmy. Oh, it's done. Jimmy, are you hurt? My daughter. I can't move. How in the world to get down there? Have you got a rope, Sergeant? Yes, there's one on my sled. Don't worry, Jimmy. We'll get you out right away. You better tie the rope around your waist and go down after him. He's too weak to hang on. I'll pull you both up. Good idea, Jake, but I'll tie the other end of this rope to dog sled and have the dogs pull me out. Want me to tie it? No, I've got it, thanks. Now, when I call to you, you drive the dog sled ahead. As the Mountie tied the rope around his waist and prepared to go down into the deep mine shaft, some strange sixth sense warned King of danger. But instinctively, he distrusted Jake. He knew that beneath the surface, the man was excited and afraid, and that always meant danger for King's master. As Jake came near the Mountie, the big dog bared his teeth and growled. King! What's wrong, boy? Get back. Yes, your dog is nervous. The great dog obeyed his master. But as Preston walked toward the mine shaft, 
King circled him and put his body between the sergeant and the deep hole, pressing fiercely against the Mountie's legs. Your dog seems worried about you, sergeant. Guess he's afraid I'll fall. Never mind, King, old fella. I'll be all right. I'll be careful. It's so deep. Don't worry. I'll let myself down slowly. This rope is strong. As the Mountie's head disappeared into the hole, King whined anxiously, then turned as he heard the voice of Jake. Are you all right, sergeant? Don't worry. I'll be down in a minute. You'll be down sooner than that. Jake! right beside you. So he saved my life, didn't he, Sergeant? Nobody ever would have found me after Jake pushed me into that hole. That's right, Jim. Jake didn't want anybody to see that piece of rock you picked up. It's full of gold. That's why Jake wanted to buy the mine. Sergeant, do you think Dave's death was really an accident? I doubt that, Mrs. Nelson. Jake probably knew about this when the explosion or accident happened. And then he tried to kill me. Oh, Jimmy. Jimmy, don't think about it. Well, neither of you will have to worry from now on. The mine is yours, and it's a rich one. And happy the hero. From now on, old boy, you'll get all the meat you can eat. And don't forget King. If he hadn't been there, Jake would have cut that rope and maybe killed all of us. That was a close call, all right. Well, I'd better go relieve King. He's guarding Jake in the next room. You'll be all right in a few days, Jimmy. That shoulder's just sprained. Thanks for everything, Sergeant Preston. Good night. Good night, son. I don't know how to thank you, Sergeant. It's really happy you should thank. He's probably the nicest birthday present any mother could have had. <laughs> All right, King, old fellow, I'll take over. Come on, Jake. We're taking you into town. It looks like this case is closed. Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature, is brought to you each week at this time, and all characters, names, and incidents used are fictitious. <laughs>